never had any evidence until now. Uh, if you're a Trumpy Trump, uh, you get a message, when to tweet, and what to say it. Weirdly, we have some evidence that this time, they all got the instructions at the same time. You are a bot. You are a bot. You will say this now. Just put politics on pause for one moment. Okay, this next clip should be shown to anyone in America who's female. It really should. I mean, this is tricky business. How does this play out? Uh, it hurts Trump for a few days, and then people start to realize this is not the worst thing in the world. He may come out. He'll come out against us. I'm going to... Oh, no, maybe he won't. Uh, but, but remember, his point was the legislature, Mark. He didn't mention the court. So this is tricky. State Supreme Court, does that qualify as a state decision? Yeah, uh, that's nice. what it is to be pro-choice. Yeah. The states can decide. If you had to travel to another state to get an abortion, it's not the worst thing in the world. Hopefully this is a very rare occurrence in your life. Once in your life, maybe it would do it. Uh, buying a bus ticket to go somewhere to get it is not the worst thing in the world. To your Are point. you familiar with a jack-in-a-box? No. Nope. Uh, what about a prick-in-a-box? No. Nope. Uh, what about all two put together and turn it up on Fox News? Yes, James Comer. Uh, James Comer now, after wasting how much on his useless, uh, totally useless hearings, and that ends a Hunter Biden. Uh, um, apparently, the people to blame for all of his screw-ups, and I'm a bit lost on this, you never guess who he's blaming. Exactly. Dan Goldman and Jamie Raskin are in a race to see who the biggest hypocrite right. in Congress can be. Look, they know exactly what they've done with the Department of Justice in weaponizing it against conservatives and against their major political opposition. What Dan Goldman's trying to do is, is triangulate the issue, and that's what they do with everything. They take, they take an issue and try to turn it around and, and collude with their friends in the mainstream media to, to create a disinformation campaign uh, that, that was started by Russia, not by the, the Department of Justice or the, the deep state bureaucracies uh, or the Democrat National Committee, but, but created by the, the Russian uh, disinformation campaign, whoever that involves. Uh, Look, Trump has a brand new spokesperson. Uh, <laughs> uh, there is a word they like to use, by the way, uh, damning. Damning everyone, we're damning, damning, oh, we're damning. I have no idea what it means, but hey, I'm not, I'm not Trump's spokesperson. Well, that's because Merrick Garland has completely weaponized our Justice Department. He is a henchman for Joe Biden. He is protecting him. The transcript in the her report was incredibly damning to Joe Biden. Not only did it prove that he committed multiple crimes taking classified documents when he was vice president of the United States, despite having no authority to do that, it also suggested that Joe Biden lied under oath, and it also was extremely damning to him politically as it showed what the American people see with their own eyes every single day, and that is Joe Biden can hardly speak. And so they gave us the transcript, but that's why they don't want to give us the audio. because it This must be what happens if you find a brick wall and bang your head against it repeatedly and then turn up at Fox News. Uh, <laughs> Every day, there is sometimes a moment where I try and find the right words to describe what you're about to see, uh, and I've got nothing. First of all, explain why you need the audio of, of that conversation with Mr. Hur if you already have the transcript. Well, one of the questions really is how did he say, what, not what did he say, but how did he say it? Uh, was he stumbling more? Because, you know, a transcript doesn't give you the pauses. It doesn't give you... Uh, nonverbal stu stuttering. Uh, but Jessica Tarlov. <laughs> I don't know how you do it every single day. On the money. <laughs> I just wanted to say, though, about the student loan forgiveness program, and I was skeptical of this at first. I said, you certainly can't go around erasing hundreds of thousands of dollars of student debt, but 62% of Americans think that at least some portion of student debt should be forgiven. And there are, they've targeted five kinds of borrowers and I think you guys would be hard pressed to say these people haven't gotten it rough. And some of it is the interest rate problem. Certainly private institutions are gouging kids. I love to see how many medical schools are now being fully funded, that billionaires are stepping in and just saying no one should come out of this with debt. But these borrowers, people who owe more now than when they borrowed, who've owed for over 20 plus years, people who have just $10,000 in debt and then they can have their life back, Folks who enrolled in, quote, low-value academic programs, so they used to have a financial aid program, and now they don't. 
These are people who you could really make the argument are victims of the system versus what you would say it was, that it's kids who are out there earning a quarter of a million dollars. This is for low and middle income people. And for Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present for you Man with a Donkey's Ass, where most of us have some level of a cerebral matter. One, Tommy Tuberville. And Tommy Tuberville used to be a coach. Uh, we are printing $80,000 a second, borrowing $80,000 a second, 4.6 million a minute. And we're thinking about giving Ukraine more money to waste. These people can't buy any more houses than what they bought. They've got beach houses all over the world. Let's start thinking about our country. Yeah, it's about ready, about ready to be $360 billion, and it's, a, it's an open commitment. In the Arizona Supreme Court, it upholds near total abortion. It allows, I think, for the health of the mother, but that's all. This was a law that was codified in 1913, and it was first enacted in 1864. A lot of people are running away from it. What do you make of it, ma'am? Well, hey, Larry, I am a mom, I am a brand new grandma, and I support life. And Senate Republicans, uh, the GOP, and President Trump really worked hard to overturn Roe v. Wade. So we returned that uh, back to the states. That is the law of the land with that Supreme Court decision. So uh, the states are handling that. But again, we worked very hard to get this result. Now the states will take that up. Um, what is that? But you do ask yourself, how is she allowed to every single day without fail to get away with it? Why is she never ever literally put in a corner and told you're lying, you're a FOS and you're a danger? Like nobody ever, ever, ever. When was Marjorie Taylor Greene, even CNN, why do they let her get away with it? And, you know, I come from a business background, and the way you get a job done for your customers, I view the American people as our customers, is we have to work together. So this letter to my colleagues is the beginning of that. First, we admit the problems. First, we admit the wrongs. And then we come up with a plan for change. I'm working on the changes that I would like to see, and I'll be proposing with my colleagues, um, and I look forward to talking with them about that. If I had it my way, we would have impeached him a long time ago. <laughs> Actually, if I had it my way, we would have been successful in our objection on January 6th and he wouldn't even be president. <laughs> I'm getting better though. And anyone that puts the word insurrectionist, calls President Trump an insurrectionist, and calls any of us an insurrectionist is a liar, and you do not deserve the power that you possess. Shame on you. We can't allow this just to, just to be gone, you know, just to let it go. You can't allow it to just transfer power peacefully like Joe Biden wants. Oh, yeah. The American people have far more power than I have, and I'm a member of Congress. If they literally hold our government accountable and stand up and say, enough of this, and I think they should throw out every single elected official. I'm not kidding. Every one of us should be thrown out. This government is a failure to the American people. Right now, she might as well be running for office. Like, everything she does, everything she says, it's, oh, it's Marjorie Taylor Greene. That's just Marge. Insurrectionist? No, that's just Marge. Uh, what did she say now? Uh, slightly xenophobe? That's just Marge. Oh, she being a bit transphobic? That's just Marge. Doesn't matter what she says. She is allowed. She's above the law, by the way. Who says so? Marjorie says so. And in that case, and if you say anything, oh. And if that does, in fact, happen, Marjorie Taylor Greene says he, she's going to look to recall him like what, uh, what Matt Gates did to you. No, but what she's doing is much different than what Matt Gates is do, did. Um, she didn't make it privileged, so it's not up for a vote. And the one thing I've always found about Marjorie is she's a very serious legislator that deals with policy. And the best way to deal with anyone like that is sit down and talk to them. I don't believe the speaker has spoken to Marjorie. I think if you sit down and discuss, you understand you have Congress that you don't control all. You, you, you have to find common ground in between. And that can be done. Those are two conservatives that can do it. But the one... How very dare you get upset about Marjorie Taylor Greene. Triggered! He's triggered. He's triggered. Oh, Marjorie, he's triggered. Oh, oh.
No, you have a situation here where somebody as a senior member of Congress clearly has the losing former guys uh, here. Well, I think it's what we've all known all along. Obama is running the country. Obama is having his uh, third term, so to speak. And everyone's always known that. And of course, he's coming out as the leader of the Democrat Party because he always has been the leader of the Democrat Party. Joe Biden is just a puppet dangling on the strings doing what Obama wants him to do. And says, does things that anybody else, one other person, would just be castigated just imagine for one moment take a moment in fact count to five one two three four five ilhan omar if ilhan omar even said i don't know four percent of what marjorie taylor green say it would just be like the end of the world it would the world would stop fox news would just have a huge breaking news breaking news Every five seconds.